In this video, we'll talk about how to configure your settings to optimize and get the most out of your WordPress site. We're going to cover a lot of ground in this video, so if you're ready, let's dig in. The General Settings subpanel controls the most basic configuration settings for your site, such as your site's title, description, and web address. The admin email address is where WordPress will send automated email notifications for things like new user registration notices. Choose whether or not you want your site open to registration. And if you do choose to enable open registration, then specify the default role for these new members. It's a good idea to set this to subscriber, since subscribers can read but not publish or edit content on your blog. Next, select your time zone, the format in which dates and times will be displayed throughout your site, and set your preference for the week starting day. Be sure to save your changes. The Writing subpanel controls the edit interface you use to write new posts and pages. These settings control the default formatting options, default category into which new posts will be created if no other category is selected, and the default post format. We covered the Press This Bookmarklet in detail in the previous video, but you can also post directly to your WordPress site via email. Simply enter the email account details here, and WordPress will periodically check for new messages sent to this address. The subject line of your email will become the post title, and the body your actual post content. It's a good idea to make this a fairly secure email address, since any messages received at this address will become new posts on your site. WordPress even generates a few random strings you can use for email addresses if you like. And last, when you publish a new post, WordPress automatically sends out a notification to a site update service, which in turn alerts search engines to your new content. This can help you to get your new content indexed more quickly. You can add additional notification services if you like. There are only a few settings in the Reading subpanel, but they're very important. You can decide whether you'd like your homepage to display your blog posts in chronological order, or one of your static pages instead. If you select a static page, then you're able to pick which of the pages you want to serve as your home page, and then which one you wish to serve as your blog page. This is really useful if you want to use WordPress as a content management system or a CMS, and would like the home page of your website to show some welcome text to your site visitors instead of just a list of your blog posts. You can also choose how many posts will appear on your blog pages at one time, and how many posts will show in your RSS feed. You can choose to show the complete text of your articles in your RSS feed, or just a summary, requiring folks to visit your site to read the rest of the article. And last, choose whether or not you'd like your site to be visible to search engines like Google, Bing, and others. You'll remember that we covered the Discussions subpanel in detail during the earlier video on comments, so for now, we'll move on to the Media subpanel, which allows you to set the maximum dimensions in pixels that WordPress will use when creating the various versions of an uploaded image, including the thumbnail, medium-sized image, and large image. I typically choose to organize my uploads into month- and year-based folders, which makes it easier to find images that I've previously uploaded. And finally, let's talk about permalinks. This can be a confusing topic, but basically permalink settings simply determine the format of the URLs, or web addresses, for your pages and posts. By default, WordPress uses web URLs for your pages and posts that contain a question mark followed by lots of numbers, but you can, and should, use more friendly URLs that are also better optimized for search engines. Most SEO experts agree that the best format is simply the post name by itself. The Custom Structure field allows you to specify a custom format that WordPress will use to create the URLs for your posts. For example, some SEO experts suggest also adding the post category name to the URL. 
Now, this field uses variables, not the actual category names themselves. Don't enter words or names here. Rather, these variables just tell WordPress the structure to use to construct your URLs. They're like placeholders, and they'll be replaced automatically by the actual category and permalink for each post. To show you what I mean, let's look at the URL for one of our posts. You can see that the URL begins with our domain name, then the name of the category, followed by the permalink for this particular post. And if I change the permalink structure to use month and name instead of category, then you can see how the URL changes. For most sites, I recommend simply using the post name format. The default values for category and tag based are usually fine in most cases, but feel free to experiment looking at how these values change the URLs for your categories and tag archive pages. So we've now covered all the major functions and features in the WordPress administration area, and you should be comfortable creating and managing your own blog or site content. This wraps up our WordPress tutorial series, but for more screencasts and training videos, be sure and check back with us from time to time. And good luck with your new WordPress website.